Welcome back to another episode of The Only Playbook. We are back with another episode. We are doing the tight ends this week. Top 15 tight ends heading into fantasy football 2024. We did quarterbacks. We did running backs. We did receivers. The common theme felt like every position was difficult. And then I got to the tight ends and I was like, my God, there are so many <laughs> tight ends. And I think even before we just started recording, uh, we determined that there are some guys that some of us left off that some of us may have. So uh, Shashot, how did you feel putting together your top 15 tight ends? I thought it was pretty hard. I thought, you know, the quarterbacks was um, second hardest and, you know, the receivers, running backs, that really came pretty naturally. But when I got to the tight ends, I was like, huh, this is going to be one of those years, huh, where tight ends are going to be maybe game changers. Like the 15th ranked tight end on my list could probably give somebody a championship. So it's like (laughs) anything goes. Yeah. Historically, I feel like tight ends have been that position that if you get right, uh, you're looking pretty good and it's hard to get right, right? Like you have to find that one tight end that's better than the rest. And and uh, if you don't get guys that are like Kelsey and now Sam Laporta, things like that, uh, Andrew, Mark Andrews. So I just tried a little bit harder to fine tune my top 15, but um, it was tough nonetheless. Yeah. A lot of guys, again, we, we, if you've been listening to this podcast, we've always preached tight end desolation and it's the first year. I feel like I'm not going to get to use that unless like 10 of these guys get injured in the first three weeks, but there's so many tight ends that I don't think we need to worry even in 12 man, 14 man leagues. I think you can draft one tight end and still be good. So, uh, let's get into the rankings. I will kick us off guys. 15 through 11. Uh, I don't have honorable mentions. I did right off the top of my head because I didn't put him in my rankings before we started. So honorable mention for me was Brock Bowers is not in my top 15. Uh, I just don't know about his offensive situation, quite frankly. I love the player. I think he's going to be a stud somewhere down the road in the NFL. But from a fantasy perspective, I have no earthly idea. Don't even want to begin to try to project where he could slot in uh, in my ranking. So number 15, I have Cole Komet for the Bears. Uh, This to me is... Just the idea that Caleb Williams is there. The offense is better. I understand there's more receivers and better receivers to not throw the football to. But again, I always love the pairing of rookie rookie quarterback with a veteran tight end. Uh, anytime you're going to need a safety net, that's going to be your guy. Uh, Cole Komet being very, very volatile with Justin Fields. I just think he has a really safe floor uh, with a rookie quarterback when he's going to need a safety blanket. So he's number 15 for me. Number 14 was Pat Fryermuch of it. So he is 14th on my list. Um, and... I think similar to uh, what you mentioned off screen, I'm kind of throwing out everything Kenny Pickett, right? So it's he's not even on my top 15 because of anything he's done with Kenny Pickett. It's just the fact that I think he's a productive, solid tight end. Uh, Russell Wilson has known to utilize Will Disley of tight ends. You know, there's random guys that he loves to use. And Pat Pratt Firemuth is a much more reliable, sure-handed tight end, uh, plays hard. So I really do like that. Shashot, you brought up a great point that I completely overlooked. They drafted uh, Darnell Washington two years ago in the early rounds, I believe. And again, throwing out Kenny Pickett and that offense when he was running it, you have to imagine that there's a world where they're trying to get this freakish athlete more involved in the passing game. Uh, So that is definitely something to keep an eye on. And the other part of this is if, in fact, the Steelers trade for Brandon Ayuk, I think targets will naturally go down for the tight end position. So that is something else to keep in mind. Number 13, I have Dalton Schultz for the Houston Texans. Um, Another solid, reliable tight end. He's been around. He's been he's been at Dallas. He's at Houston. The biggest difference now is they've added Stephon Diggs, so less targets to go around probably for the tight end position. But that doesn't mean that a high-flying, passing-heavy offense is still not going to be able to find the tight end and him be a solid, productive player. So he comes in at 13. Number 12, another really interesting one for me, guys. I didn't know where to slot him. TJ Hawkinson. Uh, on paper, he's a top five tight end. Production-wise, he's a top five tight end. He's shown that four, in, in the last four years, I believe three of the four years, he's been a top 10 finisher. So uh, this all comes down to if he's going to be healthy week one. If not, how many weeks is he going to be out before he actually gets to play? Uh, and the second caveat is obviously no Kirk Cousins, right? Uh, we have Sam Darnold. That's obviously going to be a little bit more of a question mark, but Hawkinson has produced in Detroit and he came here and he produced immediately. So I don't think that's going to change regardless of the quarterback. It's just about how healthy is he going to be to start the season. They haven't ruled him out for week one yet. So it's as far as they're not ruling out for week one, two, he could start the season on season on the pup. So anyway, from starting week one to being out four weeks guaranteed. So uh, that's why it's a little bit uncertain of where to put that man. And number 11, Dallas Goddard. He is, again, another similar solid tight end that is going to produce in the grand scheme of things. He's just on an offense that has too many other guys that take precedence. And now they added Saquon Barkley. So him being somebody who I thought last year had an opportunity to be a top five finisher, uh, could be a top 10 finisher still. But again, you're adding a 
you know, a, uh, a workhorse running back that is obviously going to see pass catching work as well. Uh, re reduction may potentially in touchdown targets for Goddard as well because of Saquon. So, uh, he comes in at 11. I have Cole Komet, Fryermuth, Dalton Schultz, Hawkinson, and Dallas Goddard 15 through 11. Nice. Honorable mention for me is Hawkinson. Hawkinson didn't make my nice. List. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. I drafted him so early last year. I'm a big Hawkinson guy, but I do think a lot of it was Kirk Cousins because he just tends to have like the safety net and the tight end and just gets a lot of volume. It's not like Hawkinson was going downfield, catching 60 yard bombs or scoring a bunch of touchdowns, just a bunch of grunt work. He did added up. And last year with the desolation of tight end situation, uh, you know, eight catches, ended up giving him number one tight end position. Um, so uh, for this reason, this year, I'm expecting some crazy shit. Honestly, I'm just expecting a lot of tight end usage. It's just, I don't know why, but it's it's happening. It's happening right in front of us. Um, so honorable mention, Hawkinson. Uh, but number 15, I have Tyler Conklin. I have Tyler Conklin, and the main reason is just Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, look around. Who else is catching the ball, right? You got Garrett Wilson. He's still a kind of a thin, he's not even as, big as Justin Jefferson and Justin Jefferson started off pretty thin, right? So, um, he can, he can catch, you know, he'll get over hundred catches for sure. But what about those third downs? What about those nitty gritty? We got to get those extra couple yards on third and short. Like who's doing all that, right? You got Brees Hall catching passes out of the backfield, but there's not that many receivers on this team that you can really rely. And Aaron Rodgers has just known to make some of the most no name tight ends of all time catch game-winning touchdowns and become relevant in fantasy. Robert Tunyon, what have you ever done for me since Aaron Rodgers did stuff with you? Nothing, right? So it's just a matter of that simple answer, and I think Aaron Rodgers always finds a way to get his tight ends involved. So Tyler Conklin gets 15. Dalton Schultz comes up at 14. Again, if he stayed in uh, Cowboys land, I think he would have been in this top higher tier of quarterbacks, but he goes to the Texans or he's been with the Texans and now there's even more uh, mouths to feed, like Sweetheart mentioned. Um, and I think this is going to be a very uh, spread out offense. There's not going to be one locked in guy. I think that's the beauty of this offense. And um, Schultz will rumble into the end zone probably six, seven times this year. And I think that's enough to be number 14 in such a uh, you know, thin league overall when it comes to tight ends. Number 13, Cole Komet. And you know what? I debated heavily making him either eighth or 13th. That's how crazy this next batch of players situation is. Um, and I just had to keep moving him down more and more. And I don't know why I, at this point, I'm kind of regretting it. <laughs> I wish I made him a little bit higher. The, their upside is just so big. Upside is tremendous. And this could be like a game breaking year or a, you know what I mean? Like a, like a record setting year for Cole Komet, to be honest with you, this may be his year. Um, all signs point to that. Like, you know, with fields, this was the guy for him. It was either DJ Moore or Cole Komet when it came to crunch time. And now that pressure isn't there on Cole Komet to be just one of two. He's one of five, right? There's one of five targets on this offense. And that just makes it even better for Komet to take control of the middle. And that's like eight targets per game coming his way. Uh, I just feel really good about the volume here, e even though it sounds like there's a lot of mouths to feed. Cole Komet is just that good to uh, get those middle of the field passes. And and we all know uh, Caleb Williams can turn a two yard, uh, you know, draw play or whatever and audible out of it and turn it into whatever he wants to turn it into. And I think the beneficiar uh, of this is definitely going to be Komet. Uh, number 12, I got Brock Bowers. Um, you know, I think when you draft a tight end that high, like that high, it, it kind of points towards usage. And I think we already talked about from a wide receiver perspective, Adams is basically it. And there's another guy that kind of was coming up last year. But, you know, what What more? We already had Mayer last year. And they went out and drafted the best available player. And, and some people had him as their number two best prospect this whole year. So, like, we're talking about Caleb Williams and Brock Bowers. Like, that could be some people's list as far as two best players in this draft. And they have one of those guys now. So I just think a player of that caliber that can change the position forever, you know, uh, I think that requires some usage. I know the Raiders are known to be just pretty dumb as an organization and just focus on all the wrong things. But I think this may be one of the smarter decisions they made. They are lacking in a lot of places, especially offensive line still, but they decided, you know what, screw that. This is a generational player. We'll get him on our team. And I just, I can't, imagine them not using him it's just i'm just using uh, my sole decision here is based off of lack of players available on this team and the fact that brock bowers will probably beat out every linebacker that he faces and get open so i'm expecting at least a lot of usage later on in the game uh, there is mayor like i mentioned so you know they may use two tight ends because of how 
uh, poor this offensive lineman are. And I think if you had to choose between Mayer and Bo uh, Bowers, pretty sure Bowers is going to be the one getting open down the field and uh, waiting for a catch. So it's not the best of reasons, but the number one tight end, number number one prospect from a, a non-quarterback perspective is alone effective enough for me to make him this high up, which isn't even that high. It's number 12. So uh, in, in 12 man leagues, he may not even be on your team. So uh, it sounds high because we're doing 15 players, but again, Bowers at 12 for me. And then last but not least in this batch of players, I got Dallas Goddard at 11. He's just all reliable. He's one of those uh, generation of players that just gets the job done. And we're so used to tight ends, just getting the job done for us that we feel safe having players like this on our team. Um, Strictly safety situation here. We've seen what this offense has done. We see how much they love Goddard when he's healthy. Um, I think 11 is a good place to play some. Uh, you know, Cole Komet has a bigger upside. Brock Bowers probably has a bigger upside. And even Dal Dalton Schultz probably, um, you know what, Dalton Schultz probably doesn't have a bigger upside. So I think it's, you know, th that's why it was so hard to gauge this this range of players. Um, and I had to put Dal Dallas Goddard above all those other three that I mentioned, all, all, other four I mentioned, because of the resume that he has. And I think they're going to be going to him a lot because what do they do from wide receiver perspective? Really not much. It's still the same two guys running back that got a little bit better and same quarterback. So I think Goddard's going to be used quite heavily unless he gets hurt. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid list. And I like your explanations on all those. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's really good. Um, so let me give you guys mine and then you guys can shit on it or say it's right, <laughs> wrong, whatever. Uh, so TJ Hawkinson is number 15 for the, for him. I think that if he's healthy, uh, which is that big if, and he plays week one, then I think he can have a solid, a, a decent year. My, my concern also for him not to be a little bit higher uh, is that last year, I think a lot of it was also due to the fact that just Justin Jefferson was out. Uh, with Justin Jefferson back, that's taken away from the target share as well. So I think 15 is a good, safe place for Hawkinson. Um, you know, with the new quarterback situation, he can still produce, but I don't have him too high. Um, uh, number 14, I have Dalton Schultz. Um, again, not the greatest choice, but there'll be weeks where he'll give you, uh, touchdowns and he'll produce points in this explosive offense. There's just a lot of, uh, ball to get around. And, and uh, I like where this office is, offense is headed. So Dalton Schultz should be a good beneficiary of that in the tight end from a ten, tight end standpoint number 13 i have pat fryermuth um so the biggest thing for pat fryermuth is that for one training camp look, is looking really promising uh for what people are saying the other thing is that uh a lot of the target share that deontay johnson would have is now gone right that has to go somewhere and yes i can go to guys like van jefferson uh, maybe roman wilson if he's playing um calvin austin but fryermuth is a guy it's a veteran it's been there uh and in in arthur smith's offense i think that he definitely has um, you know, more targets come in him his way. Uh, so it could be one of those like breakout years for Pratt Firemuth, uh, in my opinion. And that's not just a homer take, just, just more, more, more target share to come around. Um, number 12, I've got uh, David and Joku, tight end number six. Uh, he played better last year when Watson was out. Um, but we kind of got to see what uh, Njoku can do. Uh, and so the hope is, is the hope here is that. Cleveland Browns continue to utilize his skills and uh, you know he's got amazing yak ability he's got a big body can start is can, is a guy that can block as a tight end as well so so his role should increase even with Watson as a quarterback so uh, definitely has the uh, potential to finish top 15 this year uh, number 11 I've got Dallas Scotter again reliable gets receptions we know what he's going to get in this offense so um just a guy that you can go out and say okay like later around the drafts all these good guys are taken i know i can get something with dallas goddard uh based on his past and what the eagles offense is like so uh it's a safe pick with dallas goddard nice we all had goddard at 11 so <laughs> nice represent <Nope. laughs> um no, I think I think that's a good list. I, I'm just gonna segue right because right into mine because you had mentioned Njoku and Joku's number ten for me. Uh, same stuff. I mean, tight end six last year in the clutch in playoffs weeks fourteen through seventeen. Tight end two, tight end two, tight end three, tight end three. So when it mattered most, he delivered. But like you said, Shovit, the biggest caveat to that is that was all with Joe Flacco. None of that was with just Deshaun Watson. But Again, he's a he's he's considered a journeyman tight end now because he's been in the league for several years, but he also kind of feels like a late bloomer. And he's also incredibly physically gifted. So you assume that now that we've seen a, a little bit of a breakout with a inferior quarterback, you have to 
hope that that offense, like you said, is going to try to figure out more ways to get him utilized. Uh, but again, knowing that it was Joe Flacco, he's incredibly immobile and just has to throw the ball within two and a half seconds. And Njoku is probably the benefactor. And that's why he caught so many balls last year. I don't imagine that's going to be the same thing with Deshaun Watson. So that's why Njoku is not a top five finisher or whatever, but he is going to make the tight, uh, top 10 just barely number nine, Jake Ferguson for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, again, he is to me, another tight end like Dallas Goddard, really reliable, really good hands, uh, can get open the in better than Dallas Goddard in the sense that that offense has less mouths to feed. In fact, I think Ferguson has the ability to finish inside the top five this year, simply because outside of CD lamb, Again, we, I've I've beat this dead horse. Like, I don't know who else they're going to throw the ball to. Brandon Cooks is a year older. They're receiving back. They got rid of, and they got an older back who, you know, in Zeke, who's back now. So, like, I, I don't really understand the offense truly, so that's why I feel like Ferguson has the ability to actually finish higher than this number nine ranking. And, again, if there's even a 1% increase in defenses looking at last year and saying C.D. Lamb destroyed the entire NFL, like, let's somehow either double team or adjust in any way, not saying his production is going to diminish at all. But if even a 1% change in how defenses align, somebody else is going to have to benefit from that. And I think that's going to be Jake Ferguson. So Jake Ferguson is number nine for me. Uh, number eight, Evan Ingram, who was what? Tight end one last year. No, he was number one in targets and catches from the tight end position last year. Caught 114 passes and didn't even eclipse a thousand yards. So the dude was just an underneath machine for Trevor Lawrence. Um, the, the reality of that situation is I think that Jaguars really wanted to throw the ball deeper, but how many times have we talk about this show where they had like seven to 11 passes that were like deep passes that were like one foot in one foot out in the end zone. And then eventually probably those turned into like underneath passes for Evan Ingram. Right. So you have to factor in the fact that they drafted Brian Thomas, who is the, the best over the top threat in the draft this year, ran a four, three, uh, 40. So you assume they're going to try to get the ball over the top which means less production for Evan Ingram. That doesn't mean he's going to go away. He's been a guy that we've mocked and laughed at <laughs> in a couple of years, and he con continues to be consistent and produce. So uh, he comes in at number eight for me. Number seven, George Kittle. Didn't think I would have him this low, but yet here we are. We all watched wide receiver, and we all saw what we already knew completely be confirmed. The 49ers don't give a shit if they have the best player in the NFL outside of CMC. They are going to game plan every week, based on the defense and the opponents that they're playing. And if that means George Kittle is truly only going to block and not catch a single pass and play decoy, then he is completely content. The offense is content with doing that. That sucks for fantasy football because Kittle has the ability on a week to week basis to be tight end one, but he's not in an offense that's going to truly give him the ability or opportunity to do so. He is a guy that can absolutely win you weeks because when it's a Kittle week, the guy's guaranteed 20 plus points. He's going to catch two to three touchdowns. That's what we've seen. But when it's not Kittle week, we've seen goose eggs. So he can also lose you weeks. So uh, tread lightly again, another player that's been incredibly good, incredibly you know, productive, but he is truly at this stage, a boomer bust because he can have a 20, 30 point week or he can absolutely give you a goose egg. Uh, so he comes in at number seven and number six for me is Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts comes in at number six here for me, maybe a little bit high, but again, Kirk cousins, baby, this guy, if we want to talk about tight ends getting drafted early, we tell you talk about the ba Brock Bowers effects you showed. The only fear that I have for Brock Bowers is this guy, this guy's living, breathing uh, example of what could happen to somebody that gets drafted fourth overall, not, not even 10, fourth overall by a franchise to just be shoved aside to the side, not given a true quarterback. Now he finally has one. Uh, I truly believe if, again, if this guy isn't a bust, if this is truly the pits that everybody wanted him to be, thought he was, in fact, could be. There's nobody else that's going to unlock that better than Kirk Cousins. So Kyle Pitts comes in at number six for me. Ten through six, I have David Njoku, Jake Ferguson, Evan Ingram, George Kittle, and Kyle Pitts. That is very similar to my list as well. A um, couple of things here and there, but I got Jake Ferguson at 10. Um, again, solid. So that's number 10 in tight ends is basically draftable, right? It's you're talking in 10 man league. You're going to draft him. He's going to be on a lot of people's team. He's going to be on, he's going to be on every. He's not going to be not on someone's team. Uh, Ferguson has upside just as like uh, Cole Komet does. I think you can't go wrong with Ferguson this year. Um, there's just, you know, this team is really questionable. The running situation is very off. They've always had stud running backs or running backs that you look forward to drafting. No longer the case. No longer the case. All the pressure is on Dak. And they're for some reason... They're thinking Dak just going God mode. Like they're just expecting this player that has played a certain way 
for a long time to take this next level with lesser weapons. I, I don't know what the thought process here is, but that's what's supposed to happen, which benefits uh, Ferguson quite a bit. So um, plain and simple, a lot of targets, a lot of Ferguson coming up this year. David Njoku is number nine on my list. Um, again, you know, it's I didn't want to not put him on the list, but I'm also not confident enough to put him in my top five. He did really well last year, but like we said, that wasn't the offense, right? This is going to be a different offense coming in this year. Uh, nobody really knows. And now they're trying to go out and get Ayuk, uh, which they seem to be the number one contender at this point. Uh, that, that might change everything. I don't know. Um, I think Njoku's upside is just pretty high because he's such a dominant tight end. He can just, if there's a cornerback in front of him, he can run past him and he can run through him. You know how many tight ends that we talk about so far that can do that? Maybe just Brock Bowers so far. So uh, that upside from this ability to just dominate uh, is single reason to have this tight end position that can go off to, for 20 points right there on the nine spot on my rankings. Number eight. Dalton Kincaid. I debated putting him up higher, uh, but there's some other guys that have, you know, uh, a pretty solid resume and a lot of possibilities that are going to go in front of him. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put Dalton Kincaid at eight. Uh, again, just he's available. He's there. And how many, who's going to, who's going to catch the balls on this offense? Um, a lot of younger receivers now on the team, you know, and Kincaid kind of plays like a receiver. So I expect a lot of slot usage and I expect a lot of short yard situations and you know with, with his speed he can change that outcome pretty easily because he's going to be lined up against a bunch of linebackers he's going to have the advantage if they, if they try to stretch the field I think a lot of big plays are coming his way you know Gabe Davis is going to be gone we already know Diggs is gone that's how many targets is that how many targets is that amongst two people got to spread that around Kincaid has been there for a couple of years now and I think he's uh, understood his uh, value for the team. And I'm pretty sure the trust level has increased. And when you have the number one quarterback in fantasy throwing the football as many times as he does and as any big as many big plays as he makes, you need that player that really doesn't have much competition around him on your team. So for that reason, number eight. Number seven, George Kittle. This is basically like, you know, when like a like a old veteran comes to your party or something and you're just everybody's just like oh let's take a moment let's salute you know like it's one of those situations here with Kittle like I'm not excited about drafting him I'm probably not gonna draft him I'm not I'm not messing with you if if Kincaid is there I'm probably gonna draft Kincaid over Kittle but again this Ayuk leaving thing is very real I, I don't know if you guys saw what CMC said slipped on that interview just like a couple of hours ago <laughs> but uh, CMC was asked uh, in some sort of interview and he said, in regards to in regards to Ayuk, and he said, yeah, you know, as former teammates, former teammates, and then he corrected it really quickly, but it was too late. <laughs> it was too late. We all know. So uh, something's going on. Something's going on. I think either tonight, you know, around ten o'clock, or maybe tomorrow morning, we're gonna wake up or go to sleep right before some breaking news. It's it's happening, and I don't know if they can hide this any longer. It's pretty obvious. So I'm just expecting. Um, Kittle to be more used as a receiver. I know they have some receivers uh, that they drafted, but there's a lot of injuries that are already happening up there. Uh, I think at this at this point in the season, they have about three weeks to get things together. Um, and I at least think to start the season off, Kittle is going to be kind of his back to back to the old Kittle type of um, usage. And then I think once they kind of establish everything else and figure out this passing situation, uh, they may go back to reverting him to other duties. And as we know, uh, it's game by game, game by game. So I think just because he's going to be used pretty heavily the first month, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put him this high up in the rankings. I think the amount of points he's going to put up is going to make up for the lack of points down the field. So I'm expecting a pretty big start to the year for Kittle. And then lastly, I have Kyle Pitts at six as well. Um, again, we all know the talents there. I don't know if the intelligence is there. I can't, I can't prove that. You know, it's like he does, he's done a pretty, he's done a lot of dumb things so far. Um, catching passes, you know, making crazy passes. It just hasn't been his thing. It's been very plain. We've seen a lot of plain Kyle Pitts just kind of getting the job done to be relevant in fantasy, but not be emphatic in fantasy. He hasn't dominated. And I think now with separation that he can make and the ball being placed where he, he needs to go, I think that's just going to get better. So uh, I think we're finally going to get to see some pretty good stuff from Coppets. So I'll put him at six. Nice. Cool. 
Uh, another, another solid list. Okay, so number 10 for me is Brock Bowers. All right, so I think when the season starts, Mark Myers is probably going to – Mark Myers? No. Uh, Michael Mayer? Mark. Mike, Mike. No, no, Myers. Myers. What's his name? Mike Mayer. Jacoby Myers? Jacoby Myers, man. What the fuck <laughs> am I saying? Jacoby Myers. Mike Myers. Jacoby Myers is going to be a wide receiver too, and he's going to be the guy that like you know gets uh, – the second most targets, right? But I think as the season progresses, we could see Brock Bowers take that responsibility. I think that he's got a lot of things to prove uh, to the team, um, and he's he's got the skill set, right? Like the second, you know, best uh, tight end year in back to back. So Bowers has all the skill sets there. Um, great PFF grading skills, eleven point yard uh, yard uh, yak per reception. So um, the best collegiate tight end. There's no way they're not going to use him. Antonio Pierce, uh, his coach, really likes what he what he sees in it. So I think it's just going to be a matter of time that Brock, Brock Bowers is put in there and uh, has that responsibility in, uh, with the Raiders. And we'll see that this year as well. Number nine, I've got Cal Pitts, and this is just a Kirk Cousins boost. Um, he's not, he hasn't been able to live up to the hype. Um, but I think, again, a guy that can be the second receiving option, even the, maybe the first receiving option on his team. So uh, if there's ever a year for Kyle Pitts to get it done, it's this year. And I'll take that bet uh, and I'll have him number nine for tight end finish. I want to add something on top of that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think it's also the lack of Arthur Smith. I think he was really hindering Kyle, uh, Kyle Pitts quite a bit too with the type of play calls. And now that mm -hmm. the play calling is going to be more pass you know, uh, friendly, like stretch the field type of like, um, you know, 15 yards down the field rather than dinking and dunking to your running backs. I think that changes the game a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Better offense, better quarterback. I mean, that should bode well for a pass catching tight end. Um, and, um, I don't, I don't think they have John Smith either. Like the, he, I think is in Miami, so he should be the sole tight end there getting all the reps. Um, number eight, I've got Evan Ingram. This is probably the safest tight end of this year's draft, right? Like 114 receptions. Um, he had career high career high last year. Uh, there was no, um, there's, Ridley is no longer there, so he's taking some of the targets there. Um, so from the beginning of the season, before this whole Brian Thomas or Gabe Davis chemistry becomes anything, I think that the guy who Trevor Lawrence is going to trust the most is going to be Evan Ingram, and he should be able to continue, you know, just getting receptions for you. Um, touchdowns, we'll see. Um, number seven, I've got George Kittle. Um, you know, not a lot to be said, said, uh, outside of what you guys have said, top five tight end for three straight seasons may have three points one week, may have 30 points next week. Um, but that's just what you get with Kittle. So, um, it is what it is, but you know, how, how do you not, um, get a, a weak winner uh, on your team like that? Number six, I have, um, Mark Andrews, um, Lamar's, you know, one yeah. of his favorite target. Um, and you know, the target share here again. Uh, it's Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews in the passing game. Um, I think health is certainly an issue. And, and and the reason I have Mark Andrews high is like, here's the thing. He might not finish top six, right? But when you get a guy like Mark Andrews, you can get a handcuff in Isaiah Likely as well. So I like targeting Mark Andrews and then getting Likely later on because I do like Likely as well um, from the Ravens. So um, I think that either one of those guys can have a good year, but um, that's probably my play if I'm trying to go and reach out for Mark Andrews this year. But yeah, that's it. That's my six. Brock Bowers, Kyle Pitts, Evan Ingram, George Kittle, and Mark Andrews. All right. Well, so two things. Neither of us have mentioned Mark Andrews, so you, in fact, would have him the lowest. So you saying you have him this high means that we we must be idiots because we have him higher, clearly. So in more on that, and then is it ironic that this podcast of three brown guys had the exact same tight end for pick seven and the exact same tight end for pick 11 george that's just a coincidence Whoa. So, wow. seven, you know seven seven eleven was the exact that's same hilarious. fucking tight ends i knew it was seven i didn't know it was 11 too <laughs> dallas goddard 11 wow that's oh amazing. my god that is just funny simulation. can't be a coincidence man just freaking simulation world we live in all right five through one let's get down to the juicy number five i've got dalton kincaid he sniffs my top five she showed everything you mentioned and then add a little cherry on top to that because i think he's going to finish pretty high like you said the it's almost like the algorithm or the equation solves itself you have the number one producing quarterback in fantasy football he lost his two highest target throwing players right um in weeks where dawson knox was out uh dalton kincaid was a top five tight end and so now you have a guy that's primed to take the next step 
with the best fantasy quarterback in fantasy football. Um, there's no reason, in my opinion, to believe that this guy can't be the Travis Kelsey uh, for Patrick Mahomes, you know, or the, the Travis Kelsey to Patrick Mahomes to Josh Allen, essentially. So um, he is much more athletic. He's basically a receiver in that sense. So he's uh, more, he's faster. He can jump over the top. So there's almost from a physical standpoint, very little limitations in Dalton Kincaid's game. And I think he is primed to take that next step and jump into the top five of tight ends. Number four, the old man, Travis Kelsey comes in at number four, the lowest I've probably ever ranked in preseason. But, um, the reality is he's 34. The reality is we saw a stretch of football where the chiefs openly did not get Kelsey involved. Like for whatever reason, whether it was longevity to prolong his season, but they openly were not using him like they had been using him. And that was very, very alarming. You have Rasheed Rice coming onto the scene. The outside of all the bullshit that he's got going on, he has tr clearly uh, cemented himself as wide receiver one. Obviously you drafted Xavier Worthy and you brought in Hollywood Brown. So there are a lot of freaks, if you will, uh, to throw the football to. I just think, again, Kelsey is really, really important to that team. Uh, don't get me wrong, but if we saw last year, age 33 year, them trying to prolong his season and longevity by using him less, I just have to assume that age 34, that's going to be either similar or if not even more. Uh, so I think the trend for Kelsey is slowly going down, but that doesn't mean he's not a superstar and he won't finish top five. Um, number three, Mark Andrews. So I have him three spots higher than you show it. Uh, similarly, since 2019, his finishes on a points per game basis, season to season, tight end four, tight end four, tight end one, tight end three, tight end four. I mean, he's about as consistent as they come. Yes, injuries can be a concern. They are a concern for a lot of people, but I don't expect anything to change. In fact, we've seen the passing attack get better and it should be even more fluid in year two, which means I think there's more to like with Mark Andrews. So I am definitely all in on the Lamar and Mark Andrews stack. If that's a possibility for me, number two, Sam Laporta tight end. Number one last year. Um, I think the reason he's not tight end one for me strictly because he had four more touchdowns than any other tight end in all of football last year. So his touchdown to reception ratio was awfully, awfully high. It's not to say that he couldn't be that incredibly efficient for the rest of his career, or at least for this season. But I just think that there is a little bit of a regression happening there. And those tight ends that got hurt, didn't catch as many touchdown passes. Those guys will slowly sky up a little bit. So those numbers will kind of self uh, fix themselves. But again, something else I held on to that I've continued to hold on to since Shovit brought it up in the quarterback episode, 14 of 17 games indoors. I think for all Lions fantasy football players, 14 of 17 games indoors should scream, I want Detroit Lions football players on my fantasy football team. So uh, Sam Laporta, no reason he, he couldn't finish number one, but the reason he's not my number one tight end is because I'm obsessed with my number one tight end, and that is none other than Mr. Trey McBride. Trey McBride is my number one tight end. After Zach Hurts got hurt, he was tight end three, averaging six catches, 65 yards per game. He didn't have less than five targets in any game after week six, so he is consistent. Um, I think he's athletic. He's tall. He's fast. He can do basically everything a tight end can do. Um, and again, they got Marvin Harrison jr. So, uh, glass half full that automatically is going to take, uh, defense defenders away from Trey McBride. And I think Trey McBride can absolutely attack the middle of the field and finishes tight end one. So I have five through one Dalton Kincaid, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Sam Laporta, and Trey McBride. Yeah, a lot of the same players, just one different player, but all in different order besides one of them. So I have Evan Ingram at five. I hate Evan Ingram. I'm not going to draft him, but doesn't doesn't mean he's not going to be. Uh, the reality is he gets the targets. Um, I've seen him drop wide open passes. There's certain criteria to be drafted by me, and he doesn't meet those criteria. So we are going to leave him there. Congratulations on whoever gets him. Enjoy the the plentitude of fantasy points, but also get ready for a lot of yelling at the TV. Sam Laporta makes number four for me. I had Sam Laporta in two out of three leagues last year, drafted him in both of those leagues. Um, but uh, the, the stakes are too high. The stakes are too high. I don't think I'm going to be able to have a Laporta on my team this year. Um, but, you know, regression is is huge. Regression is, always wins. There's, um, you know, there's there's two things that are just very, very accurate in football, and you can't outplay um, your age, you know what I mean? Like at some point your age is going to get the best of you at some point. And, um, and number two, uh, you just can't outplay statistics and regression is going to hit and it's going to hit this year because the lions are, we, we've seen what happened when they were new and flashy. Nobody really knew what the plan was. The plan is pretty simple now, right? 
Amon Ra, Laporta, everybody else, uh, and and then the running backs are always going to be there. So I think focus is uh, you know going to be there from the defensive standpoint to contain Laporta. Uh, he's not as he's more of a speedier guy than a more of a powerful guy. So you'll see him more on the outside rather than the middle of the field. Um, so I think knowing all of that, um, he can't take advantage of those unknowns and jump up to number one. So I'm going to put him at four because these other three guys I have before him are about as sure as any best running back in the league or as any best wide receiver in the league. Um, number three, I have Travis Kelsey. Um, again, same reasons, regards, same reasons as you, but I have him a little bit higher up because I still think he's uh, still the guy. He's still one of the best, right? And he's still um, playing with Patrick Mahomes and Patrick Mahomes is going to be better. I think Patrick Mahomes has now reached his prime. I think we're about to see some shit happen that we're just going to be like, all right, that enough of the goat conversation. Uh, this is man, this man's goat. And I think we're going to see that because of the weapons he has. He has two receivers on the outside that can stretch the field better than probably any other team. And he has Travis Kelsey still doing what Travis Kelsey does in the middle. So speedier options on the outside, removes the need for the tight end to be as quick in the middle. So it's just math, right? It's like if you had slow people on the outside and quick people on the inside, the gravitational pull towards the the faster people uh, from a defense focus standpoint is always going to be there. You're going to be worried about the people that are going to create touchdowns on that play. Now you got other players to worry about touchdowns on the outside, which means you just won't have enough players around Travis Kelsey. It's just basic coverage. So he's going to be open. He's still going to catch passes. Injuries are going to be there. Taylor, Taylor Swift's going to be there whispering in his ear. Oh, I enjoyed that one year of football, but like now let's have kids and settle down. He's going to be stressed. He's going to have arguments. I don't know what's going to happen from a mental health standpoint for Travis Kelsey, but I do think he's going to regress from that number one role. Um, so I'm going to put him right there. Still plenty good, still able to be drafted. If you, if you want to take that opportunity when a perfectly good Cole Komet's going to be waiting for you at 13, going to put up probably 50 less points than him, but still pretty efficient. Uh, your decision to draft these higher up tight ends, because you're going to take huge risks because these are bigger, older guys that have been proving it for years, but they also come with a huge injury risk. That being said, the next guy that falls under that category, Mark Andrews, number two. Show but everything you were saying about Andrews was like, oh, I'm drafting him so high. I can't, you know, I'm, but, you know, it's not normal to draft him that high. It's totally normal to have him this high. My, Mark Andrews is just as consistent as Travis Kelsey, if not more of a surefire catcher. Mark Andrews is a beast. Like, if you, if you watch some of these Mark Andrews highlights, you'll see him going up against linebackers, corners, doesn't matter. The man has hands that are amazing. He'll go up, he'll come down. The ball is always going to be in his hands. I can't say the same for TJ Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson gets open because he's more of like a receiver build. So he's like a guy like Kirk Cousins. You can just place the ball where you want him to go. He'll get there because he's more of a receiver type than a tight end type. Mark Andrews is a tight end. He's a, one of the purest form of tight ends we have in this league and about as sure hands as they come. And him and developing this, this repertoire that he's been doing with Lamar Jackson just getting better, 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 better. And I, I don't know what this Isaiah Likely thing is. I, it's been there for two years, and he just, you know, he comes in when Mark Andrews is not available. And now they're even talking about using Isaiah Likely in the backfield, using him out wide. That conversation's there. So they're, they already know there's room for multiple players on this field. I don't think Isaiah Likely takes away from Mark Andrews. I think he just replaces some other wide receivers or maybe a running back in one play um, because Mark Andrews is one of the best tight ends that have. Play, been playing football and will likely be playing football in our generation. He's just that good. He's just that good. Injuries are just the only concern I have from this standpoint. That stack you were mentioning, imagine having Mark Andrews, uh, Lamar Jackson, and Derrick Henry. Henry. <laughs> like points, 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 points. It's just, it'll, it'll be wild. Um, number one, I have Trey McBride for all those things. He is Mark Andrews with his hands. He is Travis Kelsey with his size and he's Laporta with his speed. So it's like, bro, this man is the next three people all in one. He's healthy. He's young. He did everything he did last year with Dobbs, like, you know, and Clayton Toon, right? Like this man did all that with those guys playing football. And now he's got a pretty good quarterback. That's going to extend plays after plays after plays. Big plays are coming. The surefire catches are coming. Crazy amount of targets are coming. This is one of the most unanimous tight end one choices that I have made in recent tight end choosing fantasy years. Uh, Travis Kelsey putting him at three is a big deal. A lot of, if you go to an average person that doesn't really watch football, 
at the level we do, they'll be like, oh yeah, Travis Kelsey one, obviously, you know, Mark Andrews two, or like, you know, the basic stuff. But um, Trey McBride is is the real deal. He's here to take everybody's job. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think it's interesting that Mark Andrews take, uh, I just have these other guys higher, obviously. Right. But, um, and, and I, I don't think that likely is going to take his role. I just think that if Mark Andrews is out, he's just another guy that just comes in and does what my Andrews uh, is doing in terms of targets and things like that. Gotcha. Um, but I still think that Andrews is a solid pick, you know, minus injuries and things like that. But yeah. Um, okay. I'll give my top five now. Uh, so number five, I've got Jake Ferguson. Um, pass heavy offense. Okay. He finished his tight end nine. He had a slow start to this season, but final uh, games, he was tight end six and his target, uh, his biggest competition is CD lamp. So outside of CD lamp, nobody, right. Um, Dallas was the number one scoring offense last year. Uh, there's no new pass catchers and Jake Ferguson finished second in targets, uh, uh second in targets in the team. And then most red zone targets of any tight end. So, um, I think that Jake Ferguson is a guy that can come in, you get him later on in your draft and, this is a tight end that gives you uh, a, v- a very good chance of winning the fantasy leagues this year. Number four, I've got Dalton Kincaid. Uh, breakout year. Um, you know, there was there's 221 total targets that you're losing with Gabe Davis and Diggs gone. Damn. So there's just a lot of targets to go around. And yes, Dawson Knox is there, but Dalton Kincaid, year two tight end uh, with like Josh Allen. I think there's just a lot of um, you know balls to go out, and and he should be the beneficiary of that. Keon Coleman is going to be there, obviously, but that's going to take some time to develop. Um, number three, I've got Trey McBride. Um, in eight games, Kyler Murray, you know, uh, Trey McBride over averaged fourteen point seven fantasy points. It was like most in that eight game stretch by a tight end. So I think there's all these good things about Trey McBride. Um, certainly a a, a guy that can finish top three, um, and really. Honestly, if you're really thinking about it, there's real uh, rhyme and rhythm to go with Trey McBride over Sam Laporta or Sam Laporta over Trey McBride. I think top three are, is interchangeable. Um, so, you know, that's but I have him as three. Number two, Sam Laporta. OK, I've got Sam Laporta. He's going to he was tight end number one last year. Um, my concern with him to be number one is that he's a third option behind Amon Ray St. Brown heavy run game. Um, And so, you know, it's just one of those things where I think that he's going to get his, but when you're being nitpicky uh, at this point, I'm not going to go with Sam Laporta as number one. My number one pick is Travis Kelsey. All right. So you mentioned that's a show that, you know, you got this, you know, guys that are going up the middle of the sides and the gravitational pull and everything. So, (laughs) you know, I believe that that gravitational pull will allow Travis Kelsey to be number one again. I think that last year was an an anomaly. And I know that he's getting older, 34 now, right? Or 33. However, you know, prior to that, you know, he's had nine, 10, 11 touchdowns a year. And if it wasn't for two, he missed two games last year, right? If he doesn't miss those two games, he potentially has a better finish than Sam Laporta does, right? So on average, I think Travis Kelsey is still the guy that's going to demand targets in this in, in this uh, in this team. And you think that Patrick Mahomes is going to be like Travis? You're getting older. No, he's he's still going to throw to Travis Kelsey, and he's going to get his. So while everybody else maybe does uh, sleeps on Travis Kelsey, I would be the one that you know says, okay, I I still think he has some juice, and I think he has the potential to finish number one this year as well. Solid, solid list. Um, so what was the biggest difference? Me and Shovel both had McBride number one. I had Kelsey four. I think you had him three. Shovel, you have him one. Um, you had you had Jake Ferguson in your top five. I have him nine. Show you have him where? Ten? Ferguson. I got Ferguson ten, but that guy's gonna be an anomaly because he could easily go two or three. Okay. I'm- Any anybody else that you guys didn't yeah. get on this list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as you already are aware I am pretty freaking high on Jaden Daniels. I would like to bring in Zach Ertz to the table and I would like to talk mm. about the reason why he would be a solid safety net for Jaden Daniels. Anytime a young quarterback has played with Zach Ertz, he's never regressed. He's always done really well throughout his career. And I think this just with his legs, with the, op- the ability to get open, it's just, it's going to be a good offense. I just have, I just know this. I just know this. It's going to be a really good offense. And Zach Ertz, in that offense, it's going to work out pretty well for Zach Ertz. The court wants to say, thank you for bringing him up, but we've got some questions. What about all the guys, the other receivers that are there, like Jahan Dotson, <laughs> right? Terry McLaurin, right? So is that going to be an issue you, for you, target share? I, I see that you. there's been a couple of times we've brought up like 
too many receivers and not enough yeah. receivers. Like you, you mentioned Sam Laporta and who was interchangeable, Sam Laporta uh, and Trey McBride. McBride. Yeah, but yeah. In my eyes, they're not because Sam Laporta has a different offense. Trey McBride is the offense as of right now. Trey McBride and one other person are the offense, right? Mm-hmm. That means something. That's a big deal when you when the offense goes through you versus a run first offense that has Amon Ra and then now you're available for like also available. So what I mean by the, um, the Zach Ertz thing is obviously he's an honorable mention. So he's like 17th, which is not draftable, but it's something to keep your, keep an eye on. If you're going with the no tight end strategy, you want to latch onto an offense that you know is going to produce. So mm-hmm. uh, just take the shot. You're not going to lose anything because you're going to be getting them free. People aren't going to draft them and uh, getting them, get, getting a player on a good offense is always a good strategy. No, that's, that's solid. Yeah, that's true. I agree. It's good to find some tight ends that, you know, you can't like all the good tight ends are gone. Who am I going to pick? And then I, I like Zach Ertz for I think volume is definitely there, but right? he was there with the Cardinals as well. Yeah. I, the only one I thought of is anytime we think of tight ends, I'm always going towards rookie quarterback. So I didn't even think about Zach Ertz. That's a great one, but I was actually trying to think of the Patriots tight end. And I mean, it's still Hunter Henry. So like we know who Hunter Henry is, but I mean, Drake may has got to throw the football to somebody, right? I mean, he, we've already talked about the receiving court that this team has. I understand they have Demario Douglas. They have Kendrick Bourne. They have Brandon KJ Ayuk. Osborne, uh, maybe Brandon Ayuk, maybe Brandon Ayuk. But um, again, if Drake may is the starter week one, I think that tight end is going to be relevant on that team. Uh, top 15 is not a stretch. Like being the 15th best tight end is not a stretch. Feels a little bit more like a stretch because of how deep the position all of a sudden feels like this year. But uh, he's another guy that again, just because he catches three touchdowns in one week, he somehow by the end of the year finishes as a top 15 tight end. So uh, that is something that Hunter Henry uh, certainly has the possibility to do. Other than that, uh, Packers tight ends, I just don't know. I don't know what they're doing with Luke Musgrave. I think he should be the tight end, but then there's also a lot of craft action involved. So I don't want to necessarily mess with that. I think Musgrave's better. If Musgrave was their tight end, I think Musgrave is probably a top 12 finisher as well. But I just don't know what the hell they're doing with Tucker Craft. So uh, that's another guy uh, that's kind of off my list. Yeah, top 15, and we don't have Taysom Hill in any of our lips lists. Watch Taysom Hill just, you know, just chill in there. And we're like, how did he even do it? But top no, five finisher. Was there <laughs> was there a player you were saying was getting reps at tight end? Was that Cordero Patterson, or did I dream that? Yeah, it was Cordero yeah. Patterson. Another one. Watch Cordero Patterson. What team does he even play on right now? Steelers. Steelers. Oh, my God. <laughs> you thought we were worried about Darnell Washington, but we're worried about Cordero Patterson. <laughs> Wow. Can't wait to crop this and post it on my Facebook or whatever I have and on uh, after Patterson scores a touchdown. Bro, Patterson went from receiver to running back, only was relevant. He became a kick returner, only was relevant. Do we think that this man switching <laughs> positions tight to tight end is not going to mean that he's going to no, be relevant? Dude. Oh, dude. He he's going to be the, the tight end that's getting end arounds. That's what, what Brock Bowers was doing in college. Patterson is going to be doing this year. Oh, man. That's awesome. Uh, but that is it, guys. Those are the tight ends. Top 15 tight ends, no longer a desolation, now a plentitude, a plethora, whatever the hell you want to call it. So many tight ends to go around, uh, and we have a debate at who's going to finish top this year. So it'll be really interesting to see. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode. If you're watching, you're watching on YouTube, please hit the like, hit the subscribe. It helps spread the word. We are so close to the football season actually being here. Uh, I mean, Hall of Fame game, if you guys want to count that as football season being here, sure, but it doesn't feel like it. Um, but preseason is right down the road, and then regular season, and obviously the rest is history. So, um, again, socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at The Only Playbook. I'm Sweetheart. That is your show. That is Shovit. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a fantastic week.